What's up weirdos? I'm Felicia and I like scary movies and today we're talking about a film I've been waiting on for a while and that is Relic. Relic is the directorial debut of Natalie Erica James. She is a Japanese Australian filmmaker and Relic was also co-written by Christian White. I think the IMDb plot is pretty spot on, so I'm just gonna read that for you. A daughter, mother, and grandmother are haunted by a manifestation of dementia that consumes their family home. This movie has something that I think we've seen a, a, quite a bit of in the last few years, which is this idea of female generational horror films and having three generations of women being the the main characters and device in the movie. And so we, some examples of that are of course Hereditary. I think that movie has been brought up a lot when talking about Relic. But also even movies like ha the new Halloween movie from 2018 when you have Jamie Lee Curtis, her daughter, and her granddaughter and how their relationships uh, impact the story. I've also seen Relic compared to The Babadook which I think makes a lot of sense in terms of sure Australian horror but also the idea of a human experience or emotion or something like that being manifested into something demonic. And that's, I think, represented really well in this movie. So, of course, we have a grandmother who's going through dementia. At the beginning of the movie, she is missing. The daughter and the granddaughter come to their family home uh, after not having spoken to the grandmother in a few weeks. And turns out she ain't there. They can't find her. They call in search parties. They have to look through the woods. They call the police in. And one night, Grandma just shows back up, but there's something a little off about her. And along with the changes in the grandmother, we also have the changes in the house itself. The house seems to be rotting from the inside out, just as the grandmother seems to be sort of rotting in, uh, not only in her mind, but also in her body. And a big trope that I think comes up in this movie that I've talked about on this channel before, or at least on the podcast, is the old person being very scary. The um, hag exploitation or, granny horror or whatever you want to call it, this idea that old people and the experiences that they go through being kind of nightmare fuel in a way. And I, and I think that works really well, especially with dementia in this movie, because this movie is um, quite sad. You have this grandmother who you can, you can tell through the moments that she is, you know, uh, really there and in the present moment, uh, fun and sharp and like a little dark and like I don't know, cool cool old lady. But then when you see her in her moments where everything is sort of deteriorating her way and she's losing her memories and she's losing where she is and then, you know, whatever this entity is starts taking her over, you really get the tr kind of the truthfulness of how scary dementia and Alzheimer's can be. I even think about the fact like dementia, the word um, reminds me of the word demon, right? It's like some, it's almost like something else is taking over a person that you know and love. And they are, have these moments where they are no longer your grandmother. You're not even sure who they are. They don't know who you are. And then they come back and they're there again. And it's, it's, it's like the saddest, oh God, it's, it, it's so sad. And it, it really, it's, scary. it's something that actually genuinely scares me about not only my family members, but also about myself in old age. Something else this movie made me think a lot about while I was watching it is generational guilt, aka call your grandma, because it, you do have this feeling, and I think there's a line in there in the movie that's like, your parents change your nappies, and then when you grow up, you change their nappies. There's this idea that when a child grows up, the roles end up kind of having to switch, and the mother that wants to care of you, you now have to take care of your mother. And obviously in some cultures, I think, old people are much more cherished and taken care of. It's much more normal to have a house with multiple generations in it. And at least in America and maybe Australia as well, that's not so much the case where we do have, you know, nursing homes and things like that, where when people get old and the young don't uh, have the means or desire to take care of them every day, old people go to a nursing home. and, and and I think there is this like guilt about that. It, and I even have guilt about like, I don't call my grandmas enough. Like I just don't. So I haven't even gone to the characters, but the characters are Edna, who is the grandmother, uh, played by Robin Nevin, who is a full standout performance for me in this movie. I think she is amazing. Uh, from the moments that she is totally coherent and like sharp to the moments that she is becoming a demon and is terrifying in whatever way. I think she is just incredible. 
And then the daughter is Kay, played by Emily Mortimer, who I also think is wonderful, and the granddaughter Sam, played by Bella Hethcote. And I think that generational guilt comes up a lot, mostly for the daughter, of course, of Kay. She, uh, someone asked her how long it's been since she's talked to her mother, and she's like, oh, it's like been a few weeks, I've been very busy. Uh, she also was like looking up nursing homes and is like very emotional about it because she doesn't feel like she is able to take care of her mother. And there's this guilt because of course the grandmother raised her and took care of her. And it's, it's just oh, it's a guilt, guilt, guilt. And the last thing I want to talk about with the dementia in this movie is how it manifests itself in the house as, as well as the grandmother. Um, in the house, we have some scenes where the house almost turns into like a labyrinth that uh, a couple of characters get lost and stuck in. And it's very confusing. And it sort of is this picture of like what it might be like to have dementia and to be in your own home, but not know where the kitchen is anymore. And I think they represent that really, really well, um, but also in the lens of horror, right? So there are moments where like, their walls are closing in and I am truly terrified because I, I don't really like small spaces. And so there was moments of that where I was just like so uncomfortable and I can't imagine being in my own house and not being able to find my way anywhere. It's just, it's terrifying. And honestly, it's probably what um, they were intending to do with the movie that I hated You Should Have Left that just came out through Blumhouse. Um, but this idea of a house like shifting and changing and and, confusing the owner on purpose and in that movie I don't I don't think it was uh, effectively done but in this one I do like I think it was very scary and the last thing I guess I want to talk about is the ending I'm not going to spoil it for you visually but I do want to talk about this idea this has kind of a, a peaceful ending to this movie I'll say the whole movie itself is very sad and slow it's strange it definitely is not like a quick bump in the night demon in the house ghost story <laughs> what am i saying it's not one of those movies like it's definitely like a drama told through a ghost story like it is slow it is sad it is strange and by the end i i just want to say at least what i got out of it is this idea that we become our mothers and then we become our grandmothers and every generation has to go through each phase of life and has to be each role in it like you have to be the daughter and then you have to be the the mother and then you have to be the grandmother and then eventually you have to die and the cycle is continuing forever and it just made me think about somehow this idea of like how you must love and take care of each other because you are them you are the same by taking care of them you are taking care of yourself because we are all in this cycle <laughs> you know what i'm saying anyone and i do also want to give a little shout out to the cinematographer charlie saroff because i thought the cinematography in this movie was very beautiful and though the whole thing basically takes place in one house that house is so um ever expanding and shrinking and confusing and i just think it's all pretty beautifully done i really like this movie it doesn't have and i hate to compare it to any single movie like hereditary it doesn't have like the true terror or um, punch in your gut kind of feeling. This is just much more of a slow, more simple, sad story. Like I read an interview in the one of the last uh, recent Fangoria's with Natalie being interviewed by Mary Heron, who directed American Psycho, and she sort of compared it to The Others, which is one of my favorite ghost movies of all time. It's one of the first horror movies I ever saw, so it has a very special place in my heart. Um, and I do think it has that same kind of thing, like a family drama told through a slow, sad ghost story. And I, I think it does have a lot of similarities to that movie. But overall, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I feel like this video, and this happens sometimes, when a movie like really makes me think about, <laughs> think about my life and things, my reviews end up sort of turning more into analysis of the movie than necessarily a review. But my review is that I really liked it. I'll link the movie down below if you want to check it out. And also, if you've already seen it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you on my next video. Have a nice screen. Bye.